Hi guys, how are you all doing? I hope you're all fine. I'm fine as well. And today I'm bringing to you a video in which I'm going to talk all about retinol. Uh, and I'm going to talk about things which usually people do not talk about. And that is basically how can you use retinol even if you have sensitive skin, even if you have skin which has not been known to tolerate retinol well in the past. Well, do not fear because after today's video, you will be able to tolerate retinol, apply it, incorporate it in your skincare routine without a lot of issues. So let's get started. So the first thing for you to know is that if you have sensitive skin and you started with an extremely high strength of retinol to get your retinol and anti-aging game going, anti-aging game, what's wrong with me, going forward much quicker, then you need to take a small pause. Why? Because uh, while retinol is very good, it is more of a marathon, not a sprint. And if you want to take true anti-aging benefits from your retinol application, you need to incorporate it very slowly into your skincare routine. And you need to incorporate it once or twice a week, at least for the first two weeks, and then slowly and gradually build up the momentum of retinol. So that is my trip tip number one. Always try to apply retinol in the lowest strength possible and as less frequently as possible, especially in the first two to three weeks of starting on the retinol journey for the first time, your skin will thank you and you can thank me later. So the next step if you have sensitive skin and you want to use retinol is that just before using retinol, try to avoid using any irritating or very harsh cleansers like a face wash which is very high in salicylic acid or glycolic acid because retinol will do a little bit of exfoliation as well. So if you combine it with a very harsh uh, cleaning agent, that is going to irritate any sensitive skin, any peeling skin and make it much, much worse. So Try to avoid using acid toners, try to avoid using stripping face washes, uh, glow tonics, all before you apply retinol, especially, especially if you're a beginner. So the next thing that you want to remember for your retinol application is that if retinol is not suiting you, you've tried it before and every time you hit a road or a, or a block, the best thing to do is to call retinol's best friend to come and help you. So who is retinol's best friend? Ding, 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 ding. It's niacinamide. So what you're going to do is that before you apply retinol, you are going to apply niacinamide. So if you buffer your retinol with first a layer of niacinamide and then a layer of moisturizer on top and then you apply retinol right on top of it, that is going to buffer your retinol for you that is going to cause hopefully less irritation that is going to be even more effective because niacinamide and retinol are an amazing combination and in fact many companies are now formulating products which have both niacinamide and retinol in them because that is a fabulous fabulous combination so yes that is my next tip my next tip for retinol is that if retinol starts giving you that flakiness, those white dead skin cells on top of your skin, do not panic. But try to use on an alternate night, the night on which you're not using uh, a retinol, try to use a nice gentle chemical exfoliant like lactic acid or glycolic acid to gently wipe away those dead skin cells because when you apply retinol and those white flakes come on top, that is basically dead skin cells which are begging to be taken off your skin so that your skin can be clean and prepped for retinol use the next night. And yes, it's a sign that your retinol is working. So keep at it. Don't be scared. Keep at it. The only time you stop is if your skin becomes super sensitive, it starts peeling in a bad way, it's red, it's itchy, it's stingy, or you have any other reactions, then you should stop retinol, build up your skin barrier instead of going headlong into continuing with it and just stop, take an assessment of how damaged your skin is, build up your moisture barrier by using creams which have MLE technology and other creams, and then Go back to using retinol slowly, steadily, once your skin barrier is repaired. My last tip, which is the most important tip, which is going to change the way you look at retinol, is to always apply retinol on a bone dry face. Make sure that your face is not wet in any way. So the best way to apply retinol is to wash your face gently 
apply a niacinamide serum. You can use something like Poila's Choice Niacinamide Serum or the Ordinary Company's Niacinamide Serum or the Inkeysless Niacinamide. Apply a thin layer of that. Moisturize on top with a thin layer of moisturizer because a thick layer does not do anything. Like only the, the layer which is inside your skin is the one which is interacting with it. And then after that thin layer, let it dry. Do not touch your skin. Let it dry for 10, 15, 20 minutes. When it's bone dry, then you apply your retinol. I swear by this. If you let your skin dry nicely, your retinol will not irritate you. Scotch, scotch. I promise. I know promise is a strong word, but yeah, I really very strongly vouch for it. So apply these tips. Apply retinol. It is the ultimate gold standard in skincare and you must have it in your skincare regime if you can tolerate it so guys my name is sabine farooq and i am the skincare guru i hope you liked my video for today in which i have shared with you how to incorporate retinol in your routine uh, my goal in life is to educate 25 million people and change 25 million faces in a much better way to leave them much better than i found them by educating them about the importance of sunscreen, skincare, and all things beauty. So please subscribe, uh, please follow, and please share your comments with me on how I can improve and what would you like to learn more. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for being a part of my journey. Take lots of care. Bye.